I'm also married. Yeah. I have two boys right now. Mm-hmm. We used to have another son. Mm-hmm. He was our first. Yeah. And a lot of people, so I'm just gonna say, maybe I shouldn't come out and just throw advice out there right away. But, no. um, but I'm just Go gonna it. say this. How's it going, Tim? It's going. <laughs> yeah. So here we are. Yeah. Um, Tim is someone who I know, I met through the barbershop, uh, as usual, but um, I've known him from different, he's a guitarist at the church that uh, is local here, the Bridge Church, um, but he's also just a really awesome person that I've found to be super tender, but also super um, passionate about what, you, what, you're, what you're doing, right? <laughs> well, thanks, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, last time we, we saw each other was at a wedding. So that was super yeah, fun. Of uh, some friends we have that are mutual that yeah, totally different walks totally of life. totally didn't know <laughs> that yeah. you knew him. That's so funny. I'm, if I'm allowed to say his name. I'm yeah, yeah, Sorry. for Parker. Yeah, Parker. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, shout that, him out. That was so cool. <laughs> so Tim, um, with, uh, with your haircut, what are we doing today? Um, I was thinking more or less the shorter version of this. Obviously, yeah. I've got this receding goodness right yeah gotcha. but um but over here I, I usually like to keep it on one side for the most part uh-huh so um and obviously the back of my head grows a lot faster than the front i know mm -hmm. a lot of people that's the case so. yeah yeah um yeah so you like to keep it still we're gonna probably mostly do scissor work we're not going close enough to use trimmers anywhere on the hair Hell yeah for sure that's uh, fine yeah and then so we'll just kind of take a yeah. little bit uh, out of the, the weight out of the back here definitely um, do you want it the ears cut out or just that you can push it behind your ears well you usually wear um, front though right I mean I would love to have to keep long hair but where I'm working yeah. the, the theme seems to be clean cut so okay so let's so long let's do clean scissor cut. work but yeah not yeah sort of yeah Find, okay. find a balance. Yeah. Surprise me. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Tim, um, a lot of people that uh, are from your church and that, and people in the community might know your story, um, but give us a little bit of background of who you are as a person, and then uh, give us just a little bit about that that story that's kind of shaped um, and transformed your life in in some ways. Well, I'm Tim. I'm a person. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Not a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but anyway, thank you again for having me on that. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I don't know. I've I've been into a lot of things over the years, mm -hmm. hobbies or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, I like music a lot. Mm -hmm. um, kind of grew up with a few brothers, I would call them, and. Mm -hmm. uh, Headbang and playing some metal music. Nice. Um, with, but not just for the sake of just playing music. Obviously, that that kind of brought us together. But um, just the, uh, we wanted to make music with a little more depth, and that kind of a thing has always been kind of my theme in life. Okay. <laughs> um, just being a person that is uh, intentional and. Um, deep in your yeah 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 we're not yeah it, it just irks me sorry go for so it we're getting too real here. let's hear it, it just irks me the pop music with the yeah 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 <laughs> whoa 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 blah 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 like <laughs> just come out and have some meaning yeah, some depth some emotion talk about something in your life more than just you know the bar yeah, or the yeah. I, yeah, whatever yeah or the the club yeah but anyway yeah. um. And I'm also married. Yeah. I have two boys right now. Mm hmm And my wife. That's awesome. I'm not talking about her like she's one of the kids, but <laughs> I'm probably more of a kid than... Than <laughs> <laughs> your kids? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> definitely. Um, so we used to have another son. Mm hmm He was our first. Yeah. And a lot of people, 
So I'm just going to say, yeah. my, maybe I shouldn't come out and just throw advice out there right away. But, um, but I'm just going right. to say this. Um, think twice before you just jump into getting married, people. Yeah. Because, one, I can say that maybe like, maybe 30 to 40% of all the couples that, that were in our friends group that we attended weddings mm -hmm. or were a part of, like, just broken up now. Yeah. And it, it, it breaks my heart, you know, count up the cost of what you're about to do. Think mm -hmm. about it, calculate it. Because when you say for better or worse, mm -hmm. worse happens. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, it did for us. And yeah. we had a few, we had like, I think two, three simple years of life mm -hmm. um, when we got married. My yeah. wife and I are married for, oh, hold on, 2012. So, so 11 years. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, 11 years now. And it would have been fine and simple if we would have just chose not to try to have children. Mm -hmm. But once we began that, I would say you're opening the possibility of pain and troubles. Um, definitely more so for the wife, even if everything all does go perfectly well and you have perfectly healthy, happy kids. Mm -hmm. um, but we started off trying to have kids. Uh, about three years into our marriage, and mm -hmm. shortly after, a pretty tough miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And then, so we made up our minds, our next child, we would just love on that child yeah. so much, mm -hmm. and just pour everything into that kid. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, so we waited though, my wife wanted to wait for a little bit, I wanted to wait, mm -hmm. it just seemed, yeah. Like there would need to be a little time of recovery. So I think it was about a year of mm -hmm. just kind of waiting and, and recovering. There's a whole lot of emotions when you announce that you're having a child. Yeah. Your family. Uh-huh. And, and then when that gets ripped away from you, it's like, what in the world? But when we did get around to trying again, our, our son was born. Um, mm -hmm. His name was Cullen Miles Dwyer. Mm-hmm. And... He was so precious to us. He's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he lived, so, yeah. We had, we had him for nearly two years mm -hmm. before we suddenly lost him. Mm -hmm. But in that short time, the way that we lived with him, it was like, like he had more experiences than any kids his age. Yeah. And I would give that credit to my mother-in-law for taking him everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, with guess uh, one of her friends, yeah, one of her friends ha had a granddaughter, too, at that time. And mm -hmm. they were bo both born around the same time. Mm -hmm. And they would just go to all kinds of, like, zoos and <laughs> yeah. amusement parks for kids. Yeah. It's like, yeah. um, he was living. Uh -huh. and, and we did, whenever, whenever we had a chance, we would go and do things with him, too. So mm -hmm. we would, my wife and I always, would always say, my wife and I would always say that, we lived with, we lived with him with our eyes wide open, like, mm -hmm. you know, just, just soaking in the wonders of life. You just never think it's, it's going to happen to you until it does. Mm -hmm. And um, on June 20th, 2019, mm -hmm. just in the comfort of over at her parents' house, just hanging out. Mm -hmm. We suddenly lost our boy, mm -hmm. tragically. Yeah. Um, sudden loss. Yeah. Totally unexpected. We actually were having a really good day. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so we went to, from some pretty high highs to some pretty low lows. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of challenges with that. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how that um, affected you um, and your wife uh, initially. Well, how, 
how vulnerable mm. can I get? No, that's okay. <laughs> um, my wife and I are Christians, full disclosure. Mm -hmm. um, that's our faith. Mm -hmm. um, we believe in a life that goes on beyond mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. Um, beyond our bodies. Yeah. So sure. um, that right there is what carried us through. Um, but it wasn't easy. It's so. So in that in that moment that night, our son's lungs stopped pushing air, his mm -hmm. heart stopped beating, mm -hmm. and we got to work, and we didn't freeze. Wow. And um, we worked on, uh, yeah, we called 911. Mm -hmm. So our counselor encouraged us that, he said, not everyone does that. You mm -hmm. guys were strong in that. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot, of, there's three things, that, like he even taught us, there's, there's three major things that are going to come with this. There's going to be the intense sadness. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, there's going to be the guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be the trauma. Yeah. And yeah, so, so we went to a counselor too. I know mm -hmm. like not everyone loves doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, usually when someone tells you you need counseling, the last thing you want to do is go to counseling. Yeah, for sure. So no one told us that, but uh -huh. that night we just were, we just kept looking, what's next? Yeah. How do we do this? Mm -hmm. What are the steps? Uh, it's, it's like there is no book, there's no handbook for grief and sudden loss. For sure. But, um, um, I'm sure it's not something that is easy to, for people to even talk about. Yeah especially in the beginning processes of it. So we spent so much time just facing it head on and mm -hmm. talking about it that it just became normal. Um, yeah. Yet, it, no, it was not easy. Um, mm -hmm. it, actually, nothing was easy. Um, yeah. Just life, uh, existing, we, you know, yeah. uh, getting sure. up out of bed, sleeping, um, showering, uh, <laughs> even uh -huh. the basics, feeding yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, in that moment like I just remember our pastor was speaking that week or recently had been speaking about um, some, something stuck in our heads and in that moment it came to us because when we got in the car and it was time to ch like follow that ambulance to the hospital I mean uh, just it's what <laughs> you know in extreme situations like that yeah. <laughs> you don't know how you're going to react for sure. Um, yeah. My wife ended up saying a, a cuss word. Yeah. And I just remember looking at her and I'm like, no. <laughs> it, like, I just remember looking at her and saying, no, praise God. Mm. And, and it's like, I don't even know what happened. It just came out of my yeah. mouth. And she's like, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. it's like, we centered on, we, we wow. put our focus on our faith in that moment. Mm. Um, we were able to cling to that as an anchor. Mm -hmm. um, Which is really, yeah. Yeah, like one of the scriptures that, that I like says about how at, as Christians we have this hope as an anchor for mm -hmm. our soul. Yeah. So that was able to, that, that was something we were able to just, just focus in on and, and just, uh, just somewhere to look next. So, sure. um, yeah, so we ended right up getting counseling through that and the, mm -hmm. the three major things was the, the grief, the intense sadness, the trauma, and the guilt. And um, mm -hmm. we actually had a really good counselor, and he taught us, um, he taught us the, the most ridiculous sounding thing in the world. <laughs> so so um, instead, of, instead of hiding mm -hmm. from it, right? Because yeah. it's pain, right? Yeah. The last thing we want to do is focus on and ruminate on on the thing that is that has caused us the most suffering in life for sure because here we just had this beautiful two-year-old boy that was our everything and 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 then we're getting back in the car we've got two car seats mm -hmm. yeah at this point we had a two-month-old too mm -hmm. um and we had two car seats and one of them's empty it's just so 
it's hard. Um, sure. Beyond hard. Yeah. It's hard to say kind of hard it is. But mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so he, our counselor guided us in the most ridiculous thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, <laughs> it's, it, he, it's called sadness hunting. Mm. So instead of avoiding the sadness, you would literally sit down and, and drain out your, so your sorrows mm. by facing it head on. Wow. And in a way, by doing all this, we were able to actually be very functional in that season of life. Wow. Um, so basically, it's called cognitive sadness hunting, and you would, you would take a picture or, or a video or, or an item of his. It, you needed to literally ex create a list and, and, and write every single one of those things down. And we grieved, and we grieved, and we grieved intentionally and on purpose mm. because, because this, this was based off of also another scripture that, that talks about how our God has turned our mourning into dancing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's based off of that, our God can turn our mourning into dancing. It's, it's this promise that if yeah. we sow tears, we can, you know, we can receive, we can get a harvest of joy. Mm -hmm. And we did see that come. But there was rules about the sadness hunting. Mm -hmm. You weren't supposed to simply just go about blubbering all day long. Right, mm -hmm. because we want to actually be functional humans again. We actually want to live. So it gave you a space to be safe to yeah to be sad. Yeah, exactly. And um, that the rule was as simple as this: you you take all those items and you work through that list, and you say, "I'm going to be sad for this many hours today, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it all day long. I'm just going to. This is my time slot. This is what I'm going to focus on, mm -hmm. and then after that." I'm going to do whatever else <laughs> mm -hmm. or in enjoy life guilt free. Yeah. So it's it's crazy. There are some things you can do. <laughs> yeah. Um rather than just ride the wave of whatever your emotions tell you. Yeah. And sometimes you just need to feel it. Uh-huh. Too, but um for sure. Yeah. And then um the the other thing was the uh the so the guilt and the shame he he taught us to well he was also our marriage counselor oh nice. so he uh taught us to go back to a lot of the stuff that we were doing um that was just to try to just stuff to uh bind us together better as a couple yeah, yeah. <laughs> um there there was a lot of cool things that we we had when we that he taught us when we were mm -hmm. counseling too, uh, when we were getting married as well. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, the way you're gonna conquer that guilt and shame is by coming close together, mm -hmm. you know, and pouring into your marriage, just mm -hmm. uh, investing in that marriage. Yeah. Um, the, and the trauma, which is when you're just living life and something just triggers you and, mm -hmm. and it just reminds you, boom, a scene. Like what our brains actually do is record certain events of your life. Mm -hmm. And anyone listening can probably come up with one right now. Mm -hmm. They can think of an event in their life that is just seared in their mind mm -hmm. and they can replay it second for second. Yeah, That's called a trauma scene. Mm -hmm. It's it's there now there's also good ones mm -hmm. and there, there's good good uh our brain turns on a recorder when something is important it says hey hold on this yeah. is this is important stuff mm -hmm. so but the thing is with the trauma it's so painful that yeah. it gets thrown to the back and just mm -hmm. hidden deep in there huh. and then it starts leading you yeah. and the whole goal behind this is that you lead the trauma and he would challenge us he basically um what we would do is work through each scene write down mm -hmm. all those scenes and we work through all those from that night when we lost him there's mm -hmm. there's various there's a lot you know it's like a whole movie yeah. um, but we would break it up into chapters <laughs> oh, wow. and we would focus on each one of those and he would call it championing um mm -hmm. you would you would look at the scene as if you were the viewer you would look at the scene as if you are the the person like Tim in mm -hmm. the scene, mm -hmm. and you would make a you would make a promise mm. to as as the viewer 
to mm -hmm. Tim and it about um about that particular scene mm -hmm. and he would state actual truth speak yeah. just speak truth yeah. Yeah. <laughs> about what happened because instead of letting it tell you what's going on you know yeah. it's like sometimes we have to take a step back and say this okay hold on this is the actual fact mm -hmm. and sometimes we need people to speak truth to us too mm -hmm. so yeah no, so that's that was awesome. that so having that therapist was huge yeah. for for a lot of that healing um so starting with your faith for in that moment in the uh that faith in the moment of the ambulance drive and yeah. then choosing that faith but then also choosing to um, focus on on healing mm -hmm. and finding finding help when you couldn't help yourselves right yeah and I think that's that's a really important thing because a lot of people as you know <laughs> uh, pull back in those times of trauma and the that is natural of, too yeah you and know. the you guys staying together and being a healthy marriage is the outlier. Though that's the thing, that night. I, I remember um, there's a, a lot of people, our friends and family and quite a few people from our church. As soon as they heard news of that, a lot mm -hmm. of them, you know, our pastors and stuff, dropped everything, came over to just uh, like, how can we help mm -hmm. even there? and. Um, so we came back to the house that night and like even before we left the hospital though, people were saying, what can we do? And we're like, pray for our marriage. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to be another statistic. Cause we, I don't know, I think somewhere I heard it before that like statistically every time, like a lot of, you know, a lot of, it's, it's a pretty high number Yeah. <laughs> for, yeah. for couples that get divorced post mm -hmm. uh, tragic loss of a child. Yeah, for um, sure. Just can't take that mm -hmm. anymore. So we're, both of us were like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> not here, not, no, it doesn't end this way. Uh -uh. Um, so, so that was one thing mm -hmm. by the grace of God in that moment where it just said, yeah, yeah, this marriage, like us, this comes first. <laughs> yeah. Still. Yeah. So Tim, you've lost two children in your life in totally different tragic ways that you've said even in the beginning um, when you had your first son uh, it affected how you how you raised him how does now losing him affect how you raise your kids that you have with you now actually sorry i hate to interrupt but it's also been there was another miscarriage oh wow after after we lost cully Wow. We call him Cully, and mm -hmm. and then there was um, then there was an ectopic rupture, which was another child. Oh my! There might even be another one in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. My wife knows. So we've been through some stuff, but yeah, yeah I mean all of that. I mean even wow. so, in my wife's surgery, she had to have an emergency surgery because her insides filled up with blood, and if wow. that clots, it could kill her. Wow. Um, so, so the doctor said also yeah, that night she, by, so yeah, my wife started bloating and, mm -hmm. and that was during like, which surgery? Um, so that was, that was at home. We were just living life. She was working, uh -huh. whatever. And yeah, we had tried to, uh, have another child. And, um, so we noticed she was like bloated and everything for two days. Mm -hmm. Um, we found out that she had had an ectopic rupture, which is um, a, a fallopian tube blows up Whoa. and um, the blood starts coming out and starts filling up mm -hmm. in your cavity there. And, and um, so, so then she went to her OB and the doctor ended up rushing. We ended up going to the hospital. She ended up rushing her into surgery in the end, she said, it's a miracle that you're alive. She said, it actually, I, I don't see this happen. Where She said, what happened was it actually cauterized itself on the inside. What? And, and stopped. And she said, I, it, it, if it would have kept bleeding, you would have kept, you would have bled out on the inside, basically. Uh -huh. wow. And she said, this is how young, healthy women die. So she said, I would call this a miracle. 
Um, wow. So we're thankful for that. So yeah, even all of that, like everything yeah. that we've been going going through, and and our sort of yeah continue. Our our newest son, Dylan, uh, was in the hospital for RSV two week, uh, two months mm -hmm. after he was born, which gave him a condition mm -hmm. where he ends up going to the hospital a lot. It's just been it's been trying mm -hmm. because it, going back to the hospital a lot kind of brings up some of that. Oh, for sure. Stuff, but um. Yeah, so it, all of this, <laughs> all mm -hmm. of this causes us and me to, uh, to n not necessarily just live for the moment in some reckless, careless, cheap thrills kind of way, but to just invest in every moment with my yeah. children, uh -huh. to just soak that up and to think about, um, I don't know, I just, I just want to be the best I can for them and yeah. uh, give them the best childhood uh-huh okay. and yeah also our son <laughs> our, our oldest son currently right now yeah Declan uh recently uh we found out we kind of could tell this but we he's been officially diagnosed with Asperger's so okay. he's autism too so that there's also more challenges mm -hmm. so we got a lot going on <laughs> yeah, it's really fun sure. in our house <laughs> yeah <laughs> between sickness and um and uh, overstimulation yeah. <laughs> challenges of uh, uh -huh. de-escalating a, yeah. a poor boy. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it's sensory overloaded, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it just causes us to just more tenderly just be patient and loving on them. Because mm -hmm. we know that, we know that there is no guarantee that I'm gonna, we're gonna see each other, any mm -hmm. of us. Yeah tomorrow so mm -hmm. um and yeah. and it's crazy sometimes you can live life and forget about the frailty of it yeah i'm sure there's so. some days that it's just a, a normal day right yeah, you're just some days <laughs> <laughs> uh, of late i yeah. like i'm just gonna say this like ever since we decided once again ever since we decided to have children nothing has been normal <laughs> yeah like I, I used to have this concept of what normal is going to be, and there, yeah. it's just there is no normal. Just yeah. tally ho, uh -huh. here comes the next adventure. Yeah. Um, so now, does that ever like? Now I'm sure, like for me, I would I would be this way. Uh, I don't, does it ever come into your mind that you're like, can't we just have like a normal life? Oh, absolutely. Um, how do you kind of confront those? Like, obviously, uh, one day at a time, things like that, but. Uh, how do you confront those feelings of like, is will I catch a break? Well, yeah, and because the truth be told, there are people that don't get a break. There's people that have, yeah. there are parents that have special needs children that mm -hmm. are adults and yeah, and they are in it for the long haul. And yeah. and huh, God bless them mm -hmm. <laughs> and their hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, but I I know that for us with our si our situation mm -hmm. we know that dylan is going to grow out of his reactive airway disease our youngest mm -hmm. um i mean or at least get to a point where his body gets big enough where he won't have to go to the hospital every time he gets a common cold mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> or, or worse yeah but yeah. um and, and we know that uh, and we have um we have so much help with declan mm -hmm. with uh he's a he has a bht He's got an ABA, and we have so much help. Um, mm -hmm. And my wife definitely is pouring into that. So I guess, you know, that's the stuff that we hope for in the physical that we can really see right in front of us. Yeah. That's, that, there's a hope that things will get better. Yeah. Um, we keep clinging to that, but mm -hmm. even if that doesn't <laughs> pan out for us, mm -hmm. there is that hope that, the, that as, as Christians, my wife mm -hmm. and I have this firm belief that we will be in heaven one day and we will be restored. We will be reunited with our boy. Mm -hmm. Like that is, like if there is any one thing that I will say um, about losing our son, um, you know, we, we called ourselves Christians before that. But after that, man, that galvanized our, our longing for heaven and our mm -hmm. longing to see our son again. Yeah, for and, sure. Um, so we thought, okay, so we're just gonna live this life the best way we can, the most intentional 
mm -hmm. um, and do our best to just treat people, <laughs> treat people with love, because you never yeah. know if they're on their worst day, yeah. or worst month or years yeah. of their life coming down from a, a loss. You don't know if their dad just died. You don't know if, uh -huh. you know, you don't know if they've just been diagnosed with cancer. You mm -hmm. don't know yeah, if they've just lost a job or whatever. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's just it, it puts you in a place where where you start seeing the world in a different lens. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah. So, so one thing I'm hearing you say is that just through through your loss and through your grief, that you've actually been able to see the grief of others and have more compassion for them in those moments where you're kind of feeling at your worst. Yeah, yeah. And I and I don't know how to like always physically, um, like how can I tangibly physically serve this person in that moment yeah um, i guess it just come like whatever comes comes mm -hmm. but but in a way it's like it's like welcome to the club here we mm -hmm. <laughs> like we're in the club now too yeah um uh, before before we had lost our son mm -hmm. we were just you know oh that's so sad you know someone mm -hmm. someone's kid died yeah like you know, it, it was still shocking. It was, it, the thought of it, it's like, oh, that's that that would be our worst nightmare. Yeah, as but parents. You, but <laughs> but in that moment, you'd be like me and say, I can't even imagine right, what you're going right. through. Yeah, and and still, like mm -hmm. even even after losing our boy, like we've come to realize we can't like we can't act like. You know, we can't claim to know exactly what you're feeling or mm -hmm. what, how this person's receiving that, how they're walking through it. All we know is that they're they're suffering. Yeah. So, and I, I get what it means to suffer. <laughs> yeah. And to struggle. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess my one hope would be that we would be able to lead people towards struggling well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying we're perfect. I'm not saying yeah. that we're, we're totally healed. We're, you know, our, our grief is totally gone. Like, uh -huh. we still miss our boy. Yeah. Because grief doesn't end, <laughs> I'm sure, right? Yeah. Um, neither does the love. Mm. That's the one thing that lives forever. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, it, it, it does seem as if we're, you know, like the grief club. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's not something you want to be in, but before we had lived through events, such events, and, and you know, obviously the most prominent one, mm -hmm. when we heard about things, yeah, it was just, yeah, mm -hmm. a little shaking. But now we hear about things, we feel it, man. Yeah. We hear about people's losses. And it's crazy because in that moment, that season of life, it was almost like, like a gift mm. <laughs> after losing our son. And I know our counselor, he, he, he taught us this. He says, you're going to think that this is the, also, you know, that this, is, this sounds cr the craziest thing that you've heard. But he said, you're going to realize that there are gifts of Cullen, of losing Cullen, in his, in, gifts of Cullen in his passing that, you'll, that you never would have had with him being here. Mm -hmm. And I know, it's, there's, you know, it, it, seems, it seems crazy, mm -hmm. but... Um, it's ridiculous, but one of those seasons was just one. Or one of the those gifts was mm -hmm. just that that moment where we just stopped everything in our mm -hmm. lives. Um, like my my wife, uh, her she's a teacher. Her her work was her job was so gracious to her that they gave her like uh, six months or, or more, maybe a year off. Oh, wow. I forget. Um, mm -hmm. But I think she was able to take. She was able to take a lot of time off, and um, we were able to take that time to, to just slow down and stop going. So, so that gift was just to, to live and to recover and heal in that time. Mm -hmm. And that is just something, I don't know, uh, I think American culture, we don't really do much of that. We just kind of do the funeral. <laughs> Yeah. Throw the dirt on top. Yeah. Man. You know, and and move on. We expect everyone to just get back to work 
tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If not tomorrow, you better be in on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's I mean, not you know not like anyone says that necessarily, but yeah, but they hope it. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> because because they've got a bunch of pressure and everything too, and yeah, we got to keep the job moving, right? Mm -hmm. But but I feel like in our culture, there's there's something that we've lost where where we just keep moving and we don't stop and just feel that grief mm -hmm. and confront it head on like face first mm -hmm. um because no matter what you're going to go through it the question is are you going to go through it over the next 20 years of your life suffering and having issues like health issues because of your chronic anxiety mm -hmm. and depression or are you going to are you gonna face this thing head on and and confront it and do the hard work? Mm -hmm. And yeah. Well, that's awesome, Tim. So to sit sit in that moment, it was a gift. Yeah. Um and and my family's work too, my family's business was able to be gracious to me as well and give me some time, like let me work part time mm -hmm. enough to to grieve. <laughs> yeah. They knew that that was important too. So yeah. Let me ask you something about your haircut real quick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm at a haircut. <laughs> How's that length looking for you? Um, if you could do a little well, shorter at yeah. the bottom there. Yeah, definitely. And taper it off. Yeah. Okay. And are you, do you like kind of the length on top? Overall, yeah, I think this length is fine. Yeah, I know you usually like it to all kind of swoop over mm -hmm. from that one side, and then you like it to be a little bit like kind of messy look. So probably not too much shorter around yeah. the ears or anything. I don't just see so much just of a need to go way shorter. This uh -huh. is a sweet spot. Yeah, this cool. is good. But yeah, just but at, at I like to there. just keep on attacking the back because I know it grows. Yeah. My wife hates mullets, so I try to make her happy. <laughs> <laughs> but Sounds good. Our one-year-old dude, he has the sickest mullet right now, and he's blonde, <laughs> so I just say he looks like Joe Dirt. That's <laughs> so good. That's so funny. Joe Dirt, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's that first. Until, yeah, anyone that has kids knows that that first, until you get to that first baby haircut, uh -huh. they get some of the wildest hair. It just grows in how it does. Yeah. And oh, it's, sure. it's so hard to actually get yourself to want to cut it because, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. Until, yeah, until then you, when do. you cut those baby curls off, they're gone. Oh my goodness. Now you look like a young man. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get all the time. Instant transformation. Uh huh. So I, I get a lot of crying moms when they see it. They're like, <laughs> he's so sure. cute, but he looks like a little man. <laughs> yeah, a little man. Oh, man. Yeah. So, so we're kind of procrastinating his because it's, you know, our newest. He's one and a half. Uh-huh. <laughs> so our yeah. newest addition. I don't know. Yeah. We're going to have to do it soon. That's enough. funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tim, um, I love to hear kind of your advice to someone who either uh, is going through. Actually, first, I want to hear kind of your advice uh, to someone who's going through uh, the loss of a child or, uh, or something that's, that's that kind of grief. Mm. Um, and then I'd also love to hear your, your, um, your advice to someone who, um, <coughs> who is trying to be gracious to someone who's going through great mm. grief and great loss. Um, What's the, the best way they can be there for the people around them? Obviously, it's, you know, I'll each person's... I'll answer second <laughs> question first. Okay, go I'm for I'm pretty it. passionate about this one now. Yep. <laughs> now that we've been in on that side. Yeah. Because we, you know, people mean well. Uh -huh. And um, a lot of times people come to you in your deep grief. Yeah. And they say things and they don't think first. <laughs> yeah. And my advice to the one giving, trying to... That's try that the one that is watching a friend suffer mm -hmm. and struggle with deep grief. Um, before you talk, just sit and be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just come over, wash their dishes, do their wash, mm -hmm. you know, watch their kids or whatever, cut their grass. Yeah. Just love on them. Yeah. With actions. You uh -huh. don't need to say anything because you're not going to fix the fact that they're missing and they're grieving someone right now by saying yeah. anything. Just don't, don't uh -huh. even worry about saying anything. Yeah. 
of course, at the funerals, obviously, everyone says, I'm sorry for your loss. And, uh -huh. you know, people say that all the time. And, and mm -hmm. that, is, that is honestly, you know, I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> because I knew people were, you know, that meant more to me than, than well, you know, <laughs> than, than someone starts elaborating, uh -huh. you know, because, because you, can, you don't know how easily you can put your foot in their mouth real yeah. fast. And, and it is a very sensitive time. Yeah. So. Is there anything that you heard that was so outlandish that it was funny to you guys? Or was it just all like, wow, that's a little too much? Or. Um, so I've heard some people like try to give advice to different people that they have no clue. And you're just like. I don't remember. Wow. Nothing that quite like. Writing, like specifically latching on or hearing anything, anything that jumped out to me majorly, but. Family's exciting, so <laughs> yeah. it it all I can say is in, in very much the same way that a wedding can be somewhat dramatic with family. Uh -huh. So in the very same way, now I can laugh about it. But uh -huh. I was so we were so riled up in the, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, you can in the very same way that there can be drama at a wedding, there can be drama at a funeral. It's like, just yeah. let me handle this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. let, Just let us. Yeah. 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 Because there, there, was, there was some stuff that was said and some complaints and... Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, so... But just let the... Your advice would be to those people, let, uh, let, let the people that are grieving... Leave well enough alone. Yeah. yeah. Let them feel... Mm -hmm. um, be be available. That's all. Just be available. That's all a grieving person needs. And mm -hmm. let the, let them know sincerely that you are willing. And sometimes people don't actually want to jump at help because they don't even know what way is up. Um, yeah. Like. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. Like a lot of people say, if you need anything. But, yeah. But they don't necessarily mean that. They just uh -huh. they say that, and they 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 might not know how to serve you, you know, how, mm -hmm. or how they, we, all I can say is, yeah, we, we received, we took, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. if someone offered things, we accepted it. Maybe yeah. that's why we, that, that's, that's why we did well, why we continue to do well. We don't mm -hmm. reject help. Yeah. Because it's the American way. Yeah, yeah. I did it all by myself. I, yeah. I built this with my own blood, sweat, and tears. And I suffered and was miserable the whole time. And yeah. I still complain about it to this day that no yeah. one helped me. Yeah. No, no, like, it, it's community. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and were, were you asking about and what would be your advice, advice for... Yeah, for someone who's going through something similar to what you've gone through. So, obviously, <laughs> obviously allow the grief to allow yourself to grieve, mm -hmm. um, get help. It's okay if you don't want to get help right away. Mm -hmm. There's the initial yeah. time period. You're going to have to let that slam you. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a moment where it breaks and you have a, just a glimpse of clarity. Yeah. Ask for help. Um, if you know anyone who's been through this or if, I don't know, if you somehow know of me, Mm -hmm. You can ask us, you know, what helped us with counseling, who our counselor was. We can, you know, we ask people for, for help. Um, take the help that people offer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Don't be, a, don't be bashful mm -hmm. to, like, like, if someone says if there's anything you need, honestly, like, food was a big deal. Um, some family set up a, a meal train kind of deal. Mm -hmm. People would just come and drop off food in a cooler on a front porch. That's mm -hmm. something you can do for people. Mm -hmm. You can you you can coordinate uh, <laughs> you can coordinate food yeah. for them for the next month even, and uh -huh. get people to sign up, like sign up genius or whatever. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Yeah. For, well, for the person offering the help, but yeah, just just don't be hesitant to receive help mm -hmm. because people are are more people are more willing to actually jump on it and and do 
and give you help than than you might think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's cool, Tim. That's that's what I got. Thanks. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> it's looking clean. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little product in your hair to show you uh, just something you could use if you wanted it to be a little bit more messy, but not too. Uh... Is that Northern Light? It is Northern Lights. Is that what you use? That's my stuff. Sweet. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I actually use that a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm awesome. actually halfway through the can. I never thought I'd actually get there. But... Yeah, it's funny how how like it just lasts forever. Is that looked in? That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. See yeah, you. I know. Some people love that perfectly combed, <laughs> like bowl cut, and you know, it just it just looks the same every time. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I like it a this little bit. It's not the tan. A little messy. There you go. Yeah. Makes That's me feel awesome. comfortable. There you go. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>